Hey guys, so I made a video the other day. I'm William Lane Craig, the Christian philosopher, and it kind of got me thinking, right? And, you know, there's so many interesting, fun topics, right? You know, who's the GOAT in MMA? Who's the best in basketball? And you have classic topics like, you know, left versus right. And some people are, you know, if all you knew was CNN from the time you were a kid, you'd be so far entrenched in the left. If, if all you knew was Fox News, you'd be so far right. For some people, you know, they could make the argument that Donald Trump was our greatest president of all time. For some people, just the mere fact he might run again, you know, they're scared of that. And it's just interesting, you know, talking about, you know, God or those topics, it's such a complex discussion because there's so many fields where you could just spend years and years and become an expert in cosmology, history, the, you know, the veracity of the Bible, you know, things like the Shroud of Turin. If you don't know about the Shroud, it's one of the most interesting things in the world. So, but it got me thinking because I haven't thought about this in a long time, but, you know, Richard Dawkins, the, you know, the guy who wrote The God Delusion, uh, leading voice in atheism, would not talk to William Lane Craig. You know, guys like Sam Harris or, or, or Christopher Hitchens, other leading voices would sit down and talk to it, but Richard Dawkins would not. And he took this really, you know, moral stance and even other atheists are like, bro, like, what do you, to me, he's like, I don't know. Uh, Tito Ortiz or Ken Shamrock, right? maybe, but like, but so it's interesting. So Joe Rogan has had numerous conversations with him and it's, you know, if Joe Rogan said that, you know, Demetrius Johnson was the greatest MMA fighter of all time, I'd be like, dang like i gotta rethink my list you know what i mean and so to hear him talk is like oh okay like it's it's uh it's just interesting to hear his perspective and so i i thought i'd just kind of, and this is off the cuff i thought i'd just watch a few of these and just kind of give commentary so let's just watch richard, Daw richard dawkins talk to joe real quick one of the things that i really enjoyed about your book was when you explain to people that everyone who, who practices a religion is an atheist you're just an atheist in regards to Zeus or yeah, Apollo. Or, or the 999 other gods. Yes. yes. Right. And yes. that that's a home run yeah. with this argument. Yes. Because I'm home run. Run God further. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Th th that really is a home run because this is this concept of, you know, I, I me and my friends jokingly would always say oh, praise God, ode so. to Judaism. And it was like a big deal in the family. Everybody would talk about it. And it's it's Catholic. And I had an aunt who was Jewish and my uncle married my aunt and he had to convert to Judaism. And it was like a big deal in the family. Everybody would talk about it. And it's, there was no anger. Everybody loved my aunt. She's a great lady. But it was just strange that he was converting to this other religion. I remember I was five years old when this was going on. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean another religion? Yes. Christ. I was like, what's going on? Yes. Yes. And they were like, oh, she's Jewish. I go, what? What does that mean? What do you mean she's Jewish? Yes. And they had to explain it to me. Yes. And I go, okay, but she believes in God. Like, yeah, that they believe in God. Okay. okay. Yeah, and to me, the, the the interesting conversation is which religion is true. Dawkins is the guy who's like, there is no God. No. <laughs> so let's see. For some people, it represents a bonding of the community. And well, I you could have concerts and lectures and mm -hmm. book clubs. And I think when they get together and they talk about all the values that Jesus proposed, if Jesus is the higher power, it, it gives them this sort of, again, moral scaffolding to yes. live their life. Yes. Well, Jesus would probably on the whole provide a fairly good moral scaffolding. Not totally, but, but um, right. he was ahead of his time anyway. Do you, so you do think he was a real person? Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, for take there was numerous historians from that era who, you know, secular or non secular. I, I don't think anyone disputes that Jesus wasn't real. Most of the scholars I've talked to say he probably was. The evidence is not great, of course, but guys, I think, um, I don't think it's that big a deal actually because he, I mean, a wandering preacher called Yeshua or Yahoshua would have not be surprising i mean it's a common name right. and uh there are plenty of rock wandering people. yeah i don't think anyone disputes that jesus was real or not real which of course do go on now uh in islamic countries especially gay people getting thrown off high buildings and women being beheaded for the corruption and you, you go back to the origins of religion and you look towards the future do you envision a time where humanity is free of what you would consider irrational belief systems or belief systems are not based on fact. I do. Uh, I'm not sure that it'll come soon, uh, but I, I do. And I look forward to that time, of course. 
um, I think we're moving in the right direction and the figures bear that out uh, in even in America which is off the, off the scale of, of, of Western civilizations um, even in, in America the number of people who now subscribe to a religion um, uh, is, is, is dropping dramatically and the number who say they have no religion is now about 25 percent that's a lot that's that a is great a lot. deal and that compares to any one particular Christian denomination and yet politically the, that group the the nuns the no the no beliefs have no lobby they have no no powerful um, uh, pressure keep in mind anytime we if someone is is trying to be perceived as just completely rational completely logical no one wants to be viewed as like as the emotional irrational you know all over the place person we want to be the person that is you know and I think he's really I mean he's prominent he's really out there and to me he there's something and I think he's just is constantly portraying himself that way that helps him kind of be you know prominent just in the world right just being perceived as just purely logical pure logic group so politicians will go out there and suck up to I don't know the Irish lobby the Polish lo lobby the Jewish lobby the Catholic lobby etc but the atheist lobby hasn't got his act together or is only just now beginning to get his act together well politically i think people are terrified of the concept because it's such a such a long branch to go out on one of the things that you brought up in god delusion was the willingness of people to vote for a gay candidate for president a black candidate for president a woman candidate for president but then an atheist which is i believe 40 percent they think they think that um You've got to have a belief in some kind mm. of higher power in order to be moral. But the weird thing is that it doesn't have to be the same higher power as the one you believe in. Anyone will do, right. as, long as, as long as there is one. But if you don't believe in a higher power, you must be uh, immoral. Uh, you, you, and, and that is totally ridiculous when you think about the... Keep in mind, this guy's field of study is, he's a biologist. He's not a philosopher or, or a political scientist or anything like that horrible immorality of for example the both the bible and the quran which are, which are horrific in the sense that if you believe, if you actually got your morals if you got your moral values from the old testament or the quran and they they share that a great deal of course you would be stoning adulterers to death and stoning people to death for breaking the sabbath and doing sacrifices human sacrifices and animal sacrifices Sure. And keep in mind, those books, the Bible is not like a self-help book. It's a story. It's just an epic true story. And whether you want to believe it or not is up to you. But it's, I don't think, you know, there's books like Proverbs or Ecclesiastes, you know, books on, you know, those are like self-help books. But I don't think that the, I don't think anyone view it. The Bible is an epic story. And this is just a fun conversation. This is like the MMA conversation or the basketball conversation or a political conversation. It's it's hard to come to a complete sound conclusion, right? But he's a he's a Darwinian uh, uh, evolutionary biologist, right? So Charles Darwin wrote on the origin of species, right? Not the origin of life. And so when you get to when you learn just about the complexities of just like the human brain or just you know human eye or just a cell, like we are made up of millions of cells. A cell is like a cell is like a person. Right. And the fact that you're made up of millions. And when you when you learn about the building blocks of a of a of a just a cell, it's incredible. Right. It's incredible. And they're nowhere near here. Let's I pull up just one other video. And that this led to more and more complex. But of course, the nice thing about crystals is every now and then you get mistakes, mutations, and that this opens the way for natural selection. But, but at one point there was not a living thing yeah and then there was a living thing how did that happen well that's just the, i've just told you i don't see any reason why you shouldn't go from very simple to more and more complex to more and more. i don't either i don't either but i don't know how you get from mud to a living cell that's my question yes well i've told you i, I think it's on the back of crystals. Time. on the backs of crystals on the backs of crystals is at least one hypothesis yes so so that's your theory and you think that is more likely and less far-fetched than involving design i think it is I wouldn't put Ben. So, okay. And again, this is just a fun conversation, right? And and to me, you can go so far down the rabbit of so many different fields. And I think a lot of, 
guys like Dawkins, they view themselves as the height of intellectualism. And I think they're just missing out. It's just so interesting to just take such a heart. There is no God, right? Doesn't matter if on a long enough timeline, you know, the human brain, the human eye, the human whatever. I think if we can say, if you can somehow say that, find the argument that, um, let's say, you know, evolution, I, I, let's say mix God and evolution in some capacity. That's when I think you can get to, you know, lighter agnosticism atheism hard atheism is just so so anyways this is just off the cuff uh and so I, yeah comment below what you think and subscribe if you haven't